yourself with the notes of, uh, of this this morning. I, um, I remember back when I was a uh, pre-teen, something like that, and, uh, and Rambo First Blood, our First Blood came on the uh, TV when I was a kid, and it's back when I had just gotten a VCR, and I recorded it. I wasn't allowed to stay up that late, so I recorded it, and then I got to watch the whole thing over the next day. And guys, let me tell you, I was mad. I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This man right here served our country, and you're going to arrest him for vagrancy? Okay? And half of his guys are back in, in Vietnam, POWs and MIA. I was fired up. This, this was the beginning of how I got here today, right? I was like, all right, I don't even trust the government, right? And then JFK and the moon landing and all that stuff, that was easy after the way they treated this man right here, okay? And then forget about it. Forget about it. When I heard about this, I was like, I'm ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, guys, I need a machine gun. I need it now, right? Does anybody see this movie? Okay. So that's, that's how I started here. That's how I ended up in this place. And I always, like, try to examine. I'm like, people that think like us, where did it start? Were we just born that way? Or was there seeds planted? You know, how do we get here, you know? For me, I have to look back at this and be like, okay, that makes sense. This is kind of where I came from. You know what I mean? So, but anyway, Chuck Norris, Missing in Action, all those movies, right? I make a correlation here, okay? Why, why are Christians absent? Why are Christians missing in action, okay? I'm going to go f through just a couple of my ideas you know, of what I think. Some of them are convinced to never try to advance God's cause, okay? Like I keep saying, the devil's tricky. He's good. He's good at what he does, okay? He can convince people. He can trick people. Uh, hey, if you just, uh, just keep it simple here, you know, go to church, go to Shabbat, go, whatever, whatever your faith is, do that, okay? Uh, they're redirected into fruitless projects. This happens. This happens. If if the enemy can't keep you off the field, he's going, he's going to try and direct you in a way that's not going to produce fruit, that's not going to be good. And that's not, you know what I'm saying, that, that's not me, for me to judge. Um, a lot of people could say, you know, things about what we do. We try to examine our efforts and what we do, and we want to produce fruit. Strongholds. People have strongholds in their lives. That's why they don't show up. That's why they're missing in action. This, this here... Okay, this is what I'm running into, and this, and, and many of these things I'm talking about, they kept me off of the field for years, okay? I go to conferences, I meet people, and I can look out, and, and I won't look at anybody right now, but I can look out at the men, and I can know, ah, oh, there's a struggle there. There's a struggle there. Tom, I want to join you in the fight, but I've got some secrets. I've got some struggles. I know, I know that I'm not worthy or I know that I can't do this. That's what I see. Strongholds in their lives. Lack of training, experience in spiritual warfare. That's one thing that we're trying to facilitate at Through the Black. We're trying to get people trained. This, 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 this was a game changer for me. Okay? I, I started out 16, 17, 18 years old, ready to fight, but with no training, no strategy, not even having a clue what I'm doing or what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, I just know I wanted to fight the devil. I know I wanted to spread the gospel. And I would jump in there with no training and get my butt kicked. I cannot tell you how many times I did it. I had, I had the right heart, but I had no training. So we have POWs, prisoners of war, and Christians missing in action. Okay? And I want to cover today, we're going to talk about this, domestic spiritual warfare. This is real personal for me, okay? So about 15, 16 years ago, I went through a divorce. So what can I, what can I share, okay? Well, I've been through the war. I've been through the war, and I think I have some things that I learned along the way that I can hopefully share with somebody to, to save somebody some heartache, to save somebody some hard times. We're going to talk about some of those things today, okay? Domestic spiritual warfare. I'm not necessarily talking about this, but we will a little bit, okay? This is an extreme case, 
of a demonic entity uh, attacking a family, okay? And they made some Hollywood movies about it. There's always a little bit of truth to what Hollywood does, okay? And I bring this up because I, was, I, I went up there and I saw that house a couple months ago when I first did this talk up in New York. So um, this is relevant, and we'll talk about this because, you know, doors can open in homes, and we need to know, we need to know what to do about them. So, but I want to share, I want to share this with you real quick, okay? This is what uh, Paul wrote in Corinthians. Those who marry will face many troubles in this life. And I, I'm cutting a lot out there. You guys go back and read it yourself, okay? Those who marry will face many troubles in this life, and I want to spare you this. Okay. <laughs> you know, can I get a witness? All right. I, I can tell you, yes, this is good advice from Paul. And he's telling the truth here. And this is not meant as a discouragement, but Paul, you know, I mean, he's speaking from the heart here. And he's saying, you know, and we know Paul lived his life as a single man. But this is God's word, you know, sharing with us, you know, when we get married, we're two imperfect people making an unconditional commitment. Okay. What do I do with my Bible? I'm going to need that in a minute. What happens here? Marriage... Bad news, okay, for some people that are lazy. Marriage is like a garden, okay? And I could use a bunch of different illustrations, but it's like a garden, okay? You can't just plant the garden and walk away and not do anything. You have to work at it, you know? So if you went to your job and you didn't work, you're not going to get paid. You're probably going to get fired. Marriage is a job, okay? And, it, you know, it has to be... You have to weed that garden. You have to water that garden. Sorry if I'm shocking you. It's not easy. I, I've been through it. And um, it's, it, for some people it can be bad news, but actually it's good news. So I want to share something real quick, okay? And I, wa I want to touch on this because I really believe it's important. And I want to give you a resource for those who are taking notes, okay? Um, I've, done, I've done so much research in this area. All right, and I've, I've read tons of books and just, you know, trying to find out what works, what does not. The one thing, the best, the best advice, the best counsel, the best stuff out there is by a guy by the name of Jimmy Evans, okay? You know him? Okay. Uh, he's amazing. He really is. And I've, I've read a lot, and there's lots of good people out there. I like a lot of them, okay? Uh, I think Jimmy Evans is the best of the best. And he touches on, he's not a spiritual warfare guy, but he touches on a lot of things that he doesn't even know he's touching on. And I'm telling you what, um, I want to, I want to recommend this. I'm telling you, if you have the perfect marriage, you need to watch Jimmy Evans. I'm telling you right now, he's that good because um, he, he just, he just touches on all of it, okay? And his, the name of his ministry is Marriage Today, uh, therefore, and he talks about the four laws of marriage, okay? And uh, it's, you know, it was set up. By God in the beginning, the four laws of marriage. Okay, and we see here, um, the, his book is, one of his books is Marriage on the Rock. He has a ton of them. Uh, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. In that verse, God set up the four laws of marriage, okay, and they are priority, pursuit, possession, purity. I'm not going to do Jimmy Evans' thing. If you want him, you go to him. He's better at it than I am. But that resource is so good, I want to recommend it to you. Okay, so it's just, I just have to mention that as we're here. But we're talking about domestic spiritual warfare. So one of the things in all the study that I've learned, okay, and all of the research and the podcast and the seminars and the conferences that I've learned about marriage is it's probably your fault. Okay, now some people are like, wow, I'm so glad you said that. So-and-so needs to hear that. So-and-so needs to hear that. No, 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 no. You missed what I just said. You missed what I just said. And you can quote me on this, okay? It's probably your fault. And I'm not joking, okay? So, here we go. I have no clue what's going to happen. Some of this is a repeat for yesterday, but it's relevant, okay? Uh, I love this quote by C.S. Lewis, and I always mention it to people. There is no neutral ground in the universe. Every square inch, every split second is claimed by God and counterclaimed by Satan. So, and that includes the marriage, okay? 
I was supposed to get my Bible out here. Let me see if I can find this. I'm just going to go straight to the note here. Guys, um, some places we can, we, we can uh, go right off our notes, off our computer, and some places we put on a flash drive when we do a talk. And I don't have my notes, like, right here with me, but I, I'm gonna ha I might have to refer to this every once in a while. So please be patient with me. Okay, so this is in Genesis, um, in the beginning, uh, chapter 3. Uh, the, okay, the man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Verse 21, so the Lord caused the man to fall. This is actually, this, I'm sorry, this is in chapter 2. Verse 21, so the Lord caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he slept, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the area, very first surge we, we ever know about. <clears throat> And from that rib, the Lord God had taken from the man. He made a woman and brought him, brought her to him. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman for, for out of man she was taken. For this reason, a man, okay, and just the verse that we just read, okay, a man will leave his father and mother, okay. And there's not even any fathers and mothers, but God's setting it up, right? So, a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. Raise your hand if you know what happens next. Yeah. Genesis chapter 3. Satan shows up in the form of a, of, of a snake, and there is a direct attack on marriage in the beginning. Now, I don't know if there's anything else that happens in here, but according to the record that we have, the first book of the Torah, we see there's a marriage, there's an attack by Satan. Okay? So, I promise you, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you're from, you're going to get attacked by the devil. Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were not immune, you and I were not immune. Okay, and I can read through, and the temptation, and Adam was right there, and she ate the fruit, and he ate the fruit, and here we are today. The family is the smallest military unit in God's army, okay? And if the enemy can break up and destroy these small military units, he can destroy the whole platoon and the whole, you know, the whole army. So that's what he wants to do. This is important, okay? This is really important. And this kind of goes back to when I mentioned it's probably your fault, and you're like, man, I'm so glad, you know, my husband or wife was here to, you know, here to hear that. Um, blind spots. Everybody has a blind spot, okay? Everybody's got a blind spot. So if I come up to you and I say, hey, so-and-so, you got a blind spot, what are you going to say to me? No, I don't. Because it's a blind spot. You can't see it. So, I mean, we can, you know, we're, we're called to correct one another and iron sharpens iron and all that stuff, and that's great, okay? Um, my encouragement to you is ask the Lord, what is my blind spot, okay? Because the Spirit of God is going to, um, you know, if you're close, if you're sensitive to the Spirit of God, he's going to be a lot better teacher than I am, okay? But we can teach each other, and maybe you say that prayer, Lord, have somebody help me see what my blind spot is, Okay? Everybody's got a blind spot, and it's very dangerous. I'm talking to people here at this conference that have blind spots and that are unwilling, okay, to see certain things in their life, and it's just like, okay, this is off limits. I have a blind spot. You have a blind spot. If you don't have one today, you might have one next week. Be open to it, okay? Be open to the idea that we might have a blind spot. What is domestic spiritual warfare? It is. Does my clicker work? Okay, domestic. We, we know what spiritual warfare is. We're going to talk about it relating to the running of a home or to family relations. Okay, um, you and your spouse fighting domestic spiritual warfare. Not like this, but like this. Okay? We want to get, we want to move away from the boxing match to the real fight right here. This is what we want to talk about. So, guys, 
Um, they gave me a lot of time today, so we'll, I'll try to do a Q&A at the end if anybody has any questions, and I'll try to answer some questions. I'll give you, um, if we have some time left over. So you've seen this slide yesterday. I promise you, I promise you, you're going to get attacked. I promise your marriage is going to get attacked, okay? That, that's, a, that's a loving thing for me, a compassionate thing to, from me to you to warn you, okay? Uh, we have an enemy that wants to devour us. He's seeking to devour, and he doesn't care how he does it, and he doesn't care um, who he takes down, what families he destroys. That's his business, okay? I have, um, I have many friends. I have many people. This, this is an issue. The reason why I decided to do this, okay, this year was because of the calls, the emails that I get of these issues, okay? And it's just, it's through the roof, okay? And I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you where I see it the most is people that want to step out in ministry, people that want to do something, okay, uh, something on the front lines, and they have a spouse who... Um, who is affected by this, who is not, who, where they're not evenly yoked or there's an attack or, or something, okay? And I've experienced this myself, okay? I've, the stronger that I get and the more doors I'm able to shut, the enemy can't get to me, so he's going to go to the person closest to me who's the weakest, okay? It could be my wife. It could be my kids, okay? I've seen it all, and I could tell you stories, and you guys could tell me stories of where we've seen this happen, Okay? We develop, we get strong, maybe our spouse doesn't, maybe our kids don't, okay? The enemy wants to do anything he can to shut down your ministry, all right? Prepare for war, okay? So I, wanna, I just want to mention a couple things that I take really seriously in modeling the armor, the full armor of God for my family, okay? And this is something that I... I just kind of, over time, I took a look at Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm like, okay, I want to I wanna show this to my family. I want my wife and my kids to see me doing this, so I purposefully do it in front of them, okay? So we're talking about truth, okay? The belt of truth. Um, one of the things that, that I try to do to battle lies is to give my kids truth. Where does the truth come from? From God's Word, okay? So... Um, we talk about apologetics, we talk about science, we talk about um, how science and the Bible, you know, work together in our house. Because I'm not, you know, I, I'm sure, I would, at a, at a conference like this, I would not be surprised at the number of people who homeschool. I'm not one of them, okay? My kids go to a public school, there's people in here have kids go to a public school. It's almost more work sending your kids to a public school because you've got to You've got to debrief them, and you've got to, um, you've got to talk to them about, you know, what they learned, what's misinformation, all that stuff. It's different with every single kid. Some kids it wrecks. Some kids, they go in there as missionaries, okay? I'm not in judgment uh, of what you do. I think, the best, I think the best thing to do would be to, um, if you're able to do it, would be to homeschool. Not everybody is able to do that. Okay, it's just it's just not possible. So we we teach. Um, I have to I have to counter this. I have to counter the things that are taught in school. I have you know, and, and we talk about, um, you know, I told my son. My son was 11 years old last year, and I was like, ah, sorry, I got to tell you about this stuff, but I got to talk to you about sex, and I got to talk to you about transgender, and I got to talk to you about homosexuality, and I didn't really want to have this talk with you right here, right now, but you're going to hear this in school, and you're going to see this, and I told him what he's going to see, and you're going to hear it on the bus, okay? So we talked to him about all that stuff, okay? Um, I talked to them about righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. Living righteous is a lonely life. It's a lonely life, okay? And, the, you know, just the illustration here of this, but um, I, I want to explain to my kids righteousness, doing the right thing, okay? I want my kids to see that I believe in the invisible. What I mean by that is I have faith in God, okay? And God's not so invisible, but you know what I mean. I believe, you know, my friend Russ Dizdar told me, he said, faith is stepping out into nothing and landing on a rock, okay? And I love being able to use those teachable moments. Sometimes I try to force them, right? 
I'm like, oh, I gotta, you know, but I love it when it gets set up and it works out perfect, you know, and it's just like, oh, you know, I couldn't even, I couldn't even done that myself, you know, so Matthew 28, okay, we talk about the gospel shoes, all right, and walking out evangelism and teaching our kids, letting our kids see us do evangelism. I think of uh, uh, the great um, theologian and historian Francis Schaeffer, and I, I, I heard a podcast about him and how he would take his son everywhere he went, you know, to do evangelism. And that's what I've been able to do, okay? And I'm thankful for that. And I could, I could show you the difference between my son and my daughter. Many of you guys saw Evangeline yesterday. Uh, she was the one who went with me to conferences. And, and there was a door open there where she was able to go and she was able to witness these things more than the other kids, okay? And you see what an effect it had on her life. helmet of salvation. I want to teach my kids, okay? I, I, I want my kids to understand that it's for life, okay? I appreciate, I, I appreciate Sunday school, and I appreciate um, the, the teaching of the sinner's prayer and praying the sinner's prayer and all of these things, but I want my kids to understand when they make a commitment to Christ, that it is for life, okay? So I'm giving examples of how I want to model the armor of God before my kids, okay? And yes, uh, you heard me use this illustration yesterday. The sword of the spirit, if it was written about today, maybe it would be written about as a gun, you know, if it was written about in 2019. So regardless, a sword, a bullet, dividing soul and spirit, it's our truth, okay? It's from another dimension. It's impossible for this book to have been written okay, where we are right now. This book is amazing, and I love telling my kids, you have something that nobody else has. You have one up on everybody in your school. You have a supernatural, extra-dimensional advantage over everybody there, you know? And I love um, sort of bragging on and talking up God's word like this because it's amazing. Moses penned the Torah, right? We know that. He wrote that down. It was impossible for him to write that. He was directed by the Spirit of God. Okay, I, I don't have time. I love talking about it, but th there's so many things in the Torah. There's so many things all throughout the whole Bible, just uh, hidden codes and, and just, you know, you cannot understand Genesis without understanding, or you can't understand Revelation without understanding Genesis and the connection and all through the Bible and every verse is connected to every, every other verse and it's amazing. So this book is from another dimension. So, you know, we think of a, of a gun as a, as, a, as a tool for violence, as a tool for defense or something like that. And this is the weapon that Jesus used when Satan came and tempted him. Okay? Eve tried to use it. Eve tried to use it. And this is also the weapon, okay, that Satan twists. And he did that with Eve and he did that with Jesus. It didn't work with Jesus. Okay? This is a big one. This is a big one. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and give the devil a foothold. Man, I've always wanted to put this picture, a picture like this, together with this verse. I think it's very relevant, okay? Because this can happen, okay? How many times, okay? I, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. But how many times have we went to bed angry? And then this verse, this amazing advice, okay, in the book of Ephesians, so true. Sometimes the enemy can get his foot in there, and you go to bed angry, you wake up angry, okay? And then you have, uh, the enemy gets his foot in there, and it's harder to reconcile. And then it could be something so simple to cause catastrophic damage, okay? So here's just some simple advice. Just, just go by this rule. Just go by this rule, okay? And I talked about this yesterday. In your anger, it's not, it's not a sin to get angry. Anger is an emotion that we have, okay? But don't do something that you're going to regret in your anger, okay? So, and to give the devil a foothold, that word is to pawn. That means legal right, okay? You're inviting the devil in, okay? And we're using this in the context of marriage here, but it can be used in other parts of 
of our life, okay, giving the devil a foothold. Sin is the door, okay? It's okay to be angry. Don't do something you're going to regret, especially with your husband or wife, somebody who you've uh, committed your life to. You're supposed to love. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. This was good advice, okay? I'm giving you, okay, bullets, and I'm giving you, you know, a sword to use when these issues come up and when we memorize this and when we put this, okay, in our heart and we act out on this, good things happen. When we don't, not so good. Okay, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another for whoever loves others have fulfilled the law. So this is kind of a general um, scripture and it, it, and it refers to everybody. But if we're supposed to do that to everybody else, why not our spouse? We're, we're, we're loving the world, and I've seen this modeled in my family, okay? I have people who I respect who, and, and the world viewed them as like, wow, so-and-so, so-and-so, man, they're amazing. They love God. They do this. They do that. And they treat their spouse like crap, to be honest, okay? But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I've seen this. I've seen this. I've seen ugly situations. I've been through divorce. I told you 15 years ago. If we're supposed to love our enemies and we can't even love our spouse, it's just something to think about, guys. And it's so simple. It's so simple. And if we can, if we can use these bullets and get ready before it ever gets to this, because I'm telling you, I'm promising you, the enemies in some way or another is coming after you or your spouse or your marriage or in some way. Here is God's word written in another dimension, amazing um, strategy, an amazing one-up on the devil and everybody else in this world. If we would just follow this amazing advice, it's so simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no command greater than this. Wow, what a revolutionary idea that could change the world. Huh. They, they, they were like, what's the greatest commandment? So I'll give you two seconds like it. So this is, I look at my, I look at my day like this, okay? And you can take my ideas, you can take what I do and you can make it your own, okay? And that's what I constantly do. I get an idea here, I get an idea here, put them together, I make it my own. I, I you know, anything that I get right, um, somebody else got it right before me. But I like to look at my day like I'm building a house, okay? So, when I was growing up, I, what was modeled for me was prayer at bedtime. There's nothing wrong with prayer at bedtime. I don't recognize that number, it's got to be a got to be a robo call. So I would pray with my grandfather at bedtime. I was raised by my, my parents were divorced. I was raised by my grandfather. But now I want to build a foundation, okay? And I realize people's lives are different. Their patterns are different and habits and all that stuff. But in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you. And I can't read that. It's too small. But, um, yeah, and wait expectantly. I know the verse. Okay, um, what is the foundation made of, okay? So if I'm building a house, I want to build a strong foundation. For me, okay, um, a year and a half ago, I was, I was at work. I used to work at an eyeglass lab. And I, this is what I did. And I, I, I was blessed to be able to be in a position to where um, when I got to work, I began prayer, Okay, I began listening to Bible studies and building myself up and strengthening myself. So every day I had this foundation, okay, in some way. So again, I'm going to encourage you uh, to do the Psalm 5-3 model. Build your foundation and then you can build on top of that. You've got to have a strong foundation to build a house, okay. You're going to get hit. You're going to get hit by you don't know what. So... Joshua 24, 15, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Here's some more advice. You can come into my house. I can go into your house. Okay. One of, the th one of the things I do is I look at books and I look at DVDs, okay? And I'm like, okay, yeah, so-and-so really loves the Lord, all right? You can do the same thing to me, but hey, I'm doing research, guys, okay? <laughs> Video games, movies, books, okay? This is just a given, all right? Media, media, internet, websites, all that stuff, okay? Uh, what are your boundaries? What are your boundaries for your children? Okay. I would, I would really be in prayer before you decide what your boundaries for your spouse are. That may not go over too well. Okay. But if you're, if you're the spouse and you're here, I'm asking you. Okay. I'm putting you on the spot. This is my daughter, Evangeline. <laughs> and um, so... Everybody's like, wow, Evangeline, wow, you're such a good dad, Tom, man, that's amazing. Okay, what we did was, um, what I started doing with my daughter, and I didn't even know what I was doing, but we did presuppositional analysis, okay? We began to take media and, you know, analyze it in light of God's word. And I began doing this with her, you know, at a younger age. We would go on trips together, and that's where we spent a lot of time doing that. Um, a lot of trips to Chicago. I used to go to conferences up there years ago. But um, she loves this concept so much, and she, she started doing it on her own after she learned how to do it. You know, you, you, you can take a song, we can talk about something in pop media, we can talk about something in the Christian world, and we can analyze it according to God's word. That's what I taught her to do. And a few years ago, man, she, um, she choked me up. She said, Dad, um, whoever I marry someday, can you teach him how to do this so we can do this together? And I was like, ooh, that's cool. So, <laughs> um, anyway, hey, well, no, that's cool. I got it right one time, but you have not met my son, right? So, <laughs> um, this is my son, Elijah. Love this boy to death, okay? And uh, this is him actually in Haiti. We went on a mission trip. Uh, he's had some troubles in his life, okay? And I don't have, I have it on my notes. Let me, let me, br let me bring it out here real quick, okay? So I told you I'd be doing this once in a while. But let me give you something. This is really important, guys. Um, Ephesians 6, 4. It says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way that you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Man, this kid right here. Man, I love this kid. 25 years old. Wish I had time to tell you what's going on with him right now. He, he's, he still needs prayer, guys but he's a lot better than he was a year ago. So when he was a toddler, everybody, everybody said, man, he's going to be an evangelist. He would go around just laying hands on people and just had faith, had faith that they were going to get healed, okay? And because that's the way we taught him. That's the way we taught him. Long story short, he was nine years old when we went through a divorce. He said, I'm going to pray. Destroyed his faith. Rocked his world. He didn't understand about free will, right? We had some, I don't know why. You, you tell me why. You tell me your story. Who's the kid you clashed with? I love every one of my kids, but him and I, him and I, we butted some heads, right? And this kid right here, um, I, could, I could punish him. I could ground him when he was a little kid. I could spank his butt, turn around, do it right again, right? Turn around and do it right again. You know, you know, somebody's like, yeah, I got that kid. I got that kid. But every kid is different. I have five kids, every single one of them, different personalities, different interests in sports, different musical likes, all that stuff. And um, it, it's, a, it's a very specific job parenting, excuse me, parenting and being married. Okay? So, and, and I love, and again, I cannot recommend Jimmy Evans enough. Okay, a lot of people, when they're going through a divorce or when they're unhappy in marriage, they're like, I married the wrong person. No, you did not marry the wrong person. Okay? You did not marry the wrong person. I'm not going to do that. Watch Jimmy Evans. This is my son, Gavin. That's him a few years ago. Okay? That's him a few years ago, but this is the picture that I picked. Um, 
I want to tell the story about him because one day we brought home a box spring, okay, from a garage sale. And that night, that night, he woke up in the middle of the night and he wouldn't sleep in that bed anymore. It wasn't even the mattress, but it was the box spring. And the next day I was talking to him. I was like, hey, what happened, bud? How come, you know? And he was less than two years old and he told me scary hands were tickling him. Okay? Kids don't make that up. Okay? But um, anyway, what, why that's relevant is because that started a tradition, okay, with him and I that has not ended to this day because I began praying with him, and I did before then, but it ne- we've, we, we never miss a night, okay, for 12 years where he comes to me because I taught him how to have authority over that, even under two years old, and how to pray against that. And then he started coming to me. He said, Dad, pray, pray against this, Daddy. You know, and we have ever since. And even when I was home the last night, he comes in every night. He puts his hand out, and I take his hand. He says, Mom's there, you know, and we, we join hands and we pray together. So that, that, what the enemy meant for bad turned out for something very good, okay? This is my son, Zach. Somebody tell me I'm a nice guy. Tell me I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. This is my stepson. I love this boy. I love this boy. I don't have time to go into the dynamics of being a stepfather and being a stepson. I've been both, okay? It's kind of crazy. All right. So I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to um, go to New York to do this presentation for the first time in a week. And we actually, we were coming back from New York on another little mission trip. And I come back, and I don't know why he does this, but every time I leave, he moves the furniture around. And it drives me crazy. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I don't want anybody moving the furniture around. And I'm like, dude, go, you know, God bless you, you know, uh, go get your own house and you can do whatever you want to the furniture, but don't touch my furniture. And I'm ready to blow it. I, I, like these kids, they have, they know exactly how to, how to push my buttons, right? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, Hold, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Aren't you getting ready to teach on domestic spiritual warfare in just a few days and you're going to blow it over some moved furniture? And I'm like, is this a test? Is this a test? I don't know. And I handled it. I talked to it. I, I talked to him, you know. So, but if, guys, we got to be willing. We got to be willing to allow people to be human, okay? My, I, my daughter is dating a guy. She's been dating a guy. I like him a lot for a few months. And one of the things I keep telling her is like, you guys got to give each other permission to be human. Okay, you're imperfect, he's imperfect. What's next? I did not put a picture of my wife up here. I think I would get my, I would have a whole nother situation if I did. Let me find this. So again, domestic spiritual warfare, guys. Two brothers, two brothers. Let me find this. Let me read this to you. It's God talking to uh, Cain. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. We know what happened here. Domestic spiritual warfare. I mean, it started out that way, then it turned into physical warfare. And then there was a murder. So if you're a brother, if you're a stepfather, if you're a stepson, man, if you're a stepson, come on now. Give, give, give some breaks here to those stepmoms or stepdads. What's next? So, guys, if there's a, um, if, if you're addressing a problem with normal discipline, whether it be grounding and there's no response, okay, that indicates a spiritual problem, all right? So, so think about that, and you can think of scenarios in your own life, and if you apply discipline Okay, Uh, go back if you want and and do a search. Just do a Google search or a search engine search on the epidemic, I think, of of kids that actually killed their parents over video games. Okay, that's not normal. That's not normal, but they get grounded from a video game and they lose it so much that they go get a gun and, and blow away their parents. 
And then you see the interviews of these kids afterwards. They're like, I don't know why I did it. I love my dad. I love my mom. I, I would never do that, you know. But a door opened up temporarily in their life for them to get to that situation where they were willing to do that. So I, I'm not picking on video games. I could if I wanted to. Whatever. I don't play them, so it's easier for me to do it. But, I mean, these are examples. When... When normal discipline does not work, and you're like, well, I'm punishing him, they're still not reacting, I'm grounding them, they're still doing the same thing, there's a spiritual problem, okay? And we need to go to prayer, we need to um, prayer map, I'm going to talk about that in a second, okay? Could be your child, all right? What is that sound? <laughs> oh, wait, 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 here. Here we go. Why do we need you to get your house in order? Okay? Like I said, there's a lot of people that are missing in action on the front lines. Could be for a number of reasons, but this is one of the reasons that I'm running into, and this is why I wanted to do a talk on this subject, okay? I believe that you don't have to learn all your mistakes by yourself. You can learn from some from me, okay? And you can take some of my advice. My worldview comes from the Bible. Okay, so when I see something in the news, okay, and I can look at God's word and I can say, okay, this is the way governments behave, this is the way politicians behave, I can take that and apply it, doesn't mean it's the rule, okay, but then I can take a situation and I can look in the news and I can be like, I don't think that's the way that went down. You know what I mean? I do not believe that Lee Harvey Oswald was the guy that shot this guy. Okay, and then we obviously, here we are, taking on the world, right? We can apply that to so many things. Okay, but this is my worldview. This is where it comes from, okay? Uh, here's a quote that you saw me say earlier. This is why we need you to, to get in the game. This is why we need you to get your house in order, okay? If you're the problem, just quit it, okay? If, if your spouse is a problem, pray for them. Be patient with them, you know, uh, prayer map them. Uh, don't, you know, it's so easy. It, it's cause and effect. It's action, reaction. And I'm telling you what, as much as I know this stuff and as much as I've, I've um, learned and experienced and strategized, my reaction to somebody else that's behaving, you know, out of, um, out of line of God's will, I made it worse, okay? So that's why I say, when I said earlier, you can quote me on that, it's probably your fault, okay? We're guilty of making it worse. So the church is the only true enemy of Satan, the only capable... The only foe capable of understanding and hindering his plan. The enemy wants to keep us off the field, and if he can use our spouse or our kids, he'll do it. He doesn't care, okay? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send more workers. We need you. We need you, okay? Um, instead, of being, uh, instead of being two people fighting against each other or a family fighting against each other, why don't you get your crap straight and join us on the field and let's fight the enemy together, okay? And I, I just, I say that because I say that to myself, okay? I say that out of compassionate love and we just need the bluntness sometimes, okay? Why? Why do we need you get your crap together in your house? Because babies are being murdered in this country, okay? It's legal and nobody's showing up to do anything. And God is doing more with the few that are showing up. That's amazing. That's great. We have... We have amazing things happening, okay, but we need more people. We need more people. Just, to, just what will happen if you just go to the abortion clinic, sit across the street and pray? You know, wherever, wherever. You begin praying about it. You begin stepping out. You begin fighting. You begin fixing things in your marriage or in your home or with your kids or with your stepkids. Start right now and see where you're at in a year. And see how many stories and how many testimonies you have of miracles and things that have happened. And it's like, whoa, okay, this is awesome. How many babies you saved. I, you know, I don't have time to talk about every one of these things, okay. We could talk about vaccines. That's something that we don't like. That's something that we, we want to stand up against, okay. There's a lot of things that we can, we can do. If we had more people, pray to the Lord of the harvest, you know, to send the workers, okay. You know, it's a boy, right? It's a boy. They are, they are devouring our children. Not my kid. Okay, but it could be your neighbor's kid. Okay? We got to do what we can. 
We've got to do what we can, all right? They are coming after our kids so aggressively. It's making our heads spin what they're doing. Could you have seen this five years ago? Really? 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 Okay, I mean, we can talk about GMOs. I don't care what you do, do something. I can't do it all. We can't do it all, those of us that are doing it. Okay, this is serious. This is murder. All right, this is relevant. I haven't even talked about fighting the robots and the tech, but that's relevant too. There's going to have to come a day when Christians are going to have to opt out of what's going on. I talked about this a little bit yesterday. So this is why we want, this is why we want your family, okay? Again, I love what Jimmy Evans says. Um, some people say you have a 50-50 chance of having a successful marriage. No, you have a 100% chance if you do it God's way. I, I'm going to send you to Jimmy Evans. His teaching's better than mine, okay? I talk about spiritual warfare. He, he, I mean, he does too, but in a different way. And I cannot recommend that enough. You have a 100% chance of success in marriage if you do it God's way, okay? Um, don't be the problem. That's going to be one of my biggest pieces of advice to you. Don't be the problem. And sometimes our reaction can make the problem worse. Human trafficking. They're stealing our kids. They're stealing our kids and they're raping them and they're making sex slaves out of them. And it's happening all over the state. I didn't bring up any uh, stats. Maybe I will tomorrow. I'm going to talk a little bit about this tomorrow. But guys, and the enemy wants to talk to attack the smallest military unit in God's family. And if he can if he can destroy your family and he can destroy families, he can destroy churches and and he can uh, then he can destroy, you know, the whole army. And that's what he's doing. And and this is why we're seeing we're not seeing people show up on the front lines. And I I'll, I'll be honest with you, I have not shown up. There have been times where I have not shown up because I've had a domestic spiritual warfare problem. It's kept me from joining the battle, okay? Admit it, I admit it. You guys seen this yesterday? I could, just, I could go down and I could list all the problems. This is just one of them, okay? This is just one of them. So don't forget, if anybody wants a button, you can get one out there at our table if you haven't gotten one yet, little yellow button. Okay, and it's just a reminder to pray for these kids and to pray against this. And it's also an open door when somebody sees it. What's that button about? Okay, and then they're going to be sorry they asked. Okay. I will fight. I will fight. I've mentioned this yesterday, but I'm going to mention it again. A lot of people had questions. What is the training? What are you doing? What, what's through the black doing? Guys, I honestly could care less if you work with us or not. We'd love to have you. We would. But we just want you doing something. We want people getting off the couch, getting out of the mess, getting out of the fights, and joining and joining on the front lines, okay? So what we're, this is what we're doing. I'll tell you what we're doing. We are, uh, we're doing multiple different, we're doing different things. We're launching out the new Real Dark News. We're trying to use that as a tool to minister to people. It all comes back to the gospel, okay? So, um, Another thing we're doing, we're trying to train people to do what we do in spiritual warfare, in deliverance, okay? We call it freedom encounters, okay? It's not as scary as what you think, but you walk into any group of believers, I tell you what, there's going to be five out of ten that need some kind of deliverance, okay? And they need help. And I tell you what, I've helped a lot of people in ten years, and if I wouldn't have got the training, they may not have gotten help, Okay? And that's not, I'm not lifting myself up there. I, I thank God that I did, but I'm like, what would happen if I wouldn't have got trained? What if I wouldn't have answered that call? I'm telling you what, I don't get them all. And I, I'm not perfect, and I miss opportunities. And everybody's like, man, what would Tom do? Don't say that, man. What would Tom do in this situation? I don't know. I take it, you know, um, every issue, you know, as it comes. Okay? I'm by no means perfect, you know. Uh, but we, we try to do the best we can. We want to get people trained. So the training that changed my life is Russ Dizdar's training. I've read a lot of other books. There's a lot of great stuff out there. But we're just trying to point you guys in this direction if you want. It's all free. None of this costs anything. But um, as we grow, we get more and more people asking us for help, okay? 
So Colleen's back there. Raise your hand, Colleen. I put her on the spot. This is my friend Colleen. She has been doing an amazing job helping me facilitate this part of the ministry. So what happens? Okay, you send an email to throughtheblack.connect at outlook.com, and you'll get an application, okay? We have to do screening, okay? Not everybody can do this, okay? If you want to be a writer, if you want to be a researcher, if you want to uh, learn deliverance just so you can take it back to your church or to your church group or your whatever, I don't care. Just use it because we want people trained. We want people to have experience to be able to set other people free, okay? Because we can get other people free, we can get them on the front lines, Okay? Salvation, healing, and deliverance. That was the ministry of Jesus. So you'll get an application, fill that application out, you send it back to Las Vegas, email, that's my, my friend Katie is over there, and then she dispatches the, the emails to the right people. Colleen is one of those people, and she will, the, you, don't, you don't need us to do this, okay? But if you take the class with us, it's kind of like a classroom setting, and uh, she's actually overwhelmed, and we had to get somebody else to help her. So there's somebody else actually, um, uh, Sean, right? Sean is helping her now because we've had, how many people all together, Colleen? So 50 people getting trained. And you know what? Hey, I hope those guys help us, but if they don't, I don't care. I want them, okay. Um, I, I want them to help somebody. I want them to do something somewhere. Take it to your town, to your neighborhood, to your school board meeting. I don't care. Cast the demons out. Let's get this on show on the road, okay? So um, <clears throat> we're looking for news reporters, we're looking for writers, and we're looking for people to do deliverance, our freedom encounters, okay? It's not as scary as it sounds, okay? Anybody can do what we do. If you weren't here yesterday, let me tell this story one more time, okay? Uh, J. Brett Prince, my friend uh, sitting back there. Uh, we were supposed to have a meeting a couple months ago. He said, "Hey, um, I have somebody that needs prayer." We went over to this. Um, we went over to this lady's house, and as I told the story yesterday, there's a history. She lived in a house where there was a suicide in the garage, and as I went in, I felt the presence. Okay, I felt it pushing back. I asked Jay Brett. I said, "Pray for me right now." Okay, you don't ever want to do this alone, right? So, and we began to pray. We began to push back. We began to lead her in a prayer of repentance and a prayer of renunciation of the doors that she opened in her life, she took us to every room. She said, I want you to pray over every room of this house. Okay, we went out to the garage and we said, this is no longer a place of death, this is a place of life. We, re we repent and we renounce of what happened in this place. This guy hung himself. She took us to the basement. She said, I was gonna hang myself in this basement. And she repented and we prayed and we, we shut it all down. And she took, she said, go to my kid's room. Go, you know, we went to the door of her bedroom. And we prayed over every room in the house. You know, I wonder where she would be if we went and went. I'm not a hero. I'm just a guy that answered a phone call, okay? But anybody can do this and it's so easy. We want to teach you how to do it. We want to help you. We want to be there for you. We want to be your friend. Once you learn it, once you learn the model, you can do so much good. You guys can do so much good. I've got just seven minutes. Any questions real quick? That's cool if we're not. That's cool if we're not. I'm going to get a bite to eat. No questions? Anybody? You guys know I'll be, I'll be off and on back at the table. I'm going to catch J. Brett Prince. He's coming up very soon, and then we have a talk later. So it might be hard to catch me. But um, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. A love take on the world. God bless Chris and Liz and everybody involved and the sound guy and all that. Amazing, amazing group. So can't wait to talk to you. Thanks, guys.
check, 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 one, check, two.